Saranofsky, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You look like you actually got ready for a video podcast today. Well, I I did not brush my hair, um, <laughs> <laughs> per usual. Uh, no, I just have like rushed my daughter to summer camp and then I'm back. So, um, and it's going to be like 115 today. So, oh my gosh, I thought it was hot in imagine? Florida. So you Is are it, you are I, where for people who don't know? I'm in Los Angeles. Okay, so you're you're in Los Angeles. And so we're, we're today we're talking about your series, The Unbelievable Liv Bofant. And book nine yes. is, is coming out this week. So congratulations on that. Getting to nine. This is the, the longest series you've had with LMBPN. Have you had longer series other places? No, no. This is my longest series ever. I mean, we've done a few seven book series. Mm -hmm. um, but this is one of those that, you know, just really took off and we didn't expect it to. And it's been a wild ride. I love it. What was the plan when you when you first did it? Was the plan to do a set number of books or to just see what happened? Um, well, I mean, Michael always comes at it from a business standpoint. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we had, we had crafted a arc, three arcs that would go over 12 books, which is what we are now doing. But there was a moment where I was at book three and he was like, well, we're going to revisit this and see if we're going to move on to the next arc. And I'm like, wait, no, like, <laughs> I have plans. These characters are talking, you know, like, yeah. and, and I got it. Like, you know, it's a business thing. And, and, uh, anyways, so I, I think that that's the way it goes with these series, right? You would, you would know it's like it, you plan for 12, but if the first three don't take off, you, Quit. Yeah, but I, I'm surprised you guys had that conversation. Oh, well, you were probably writing book three, but the first two maybe hadn't been out yet. I don't know, because by the second book, it's like, wow, this is going really well. Yes, yes. I was I was amazed. I still it's I told Michael that I'm very superstitious now that this because, you know, you've been with me on these. I've had some series that have done great and I've mm -hmm. had some that we'll call a flop. I don't know, um, you know, just didn't do as well. So when this one um did well i like i told michael i was like i'm not changing my my nail polish <laughs> i'm using the same shampoo i of course i'm not gonna brush my hair yeah, of course of uh, course <laughs> Liv buffon is known for never brushing her hair so michael and i always go back and forth when we're doing the cover design because there's one shot of the model that we use where her hair's up uh -huh. and he's always like let's use that and i was like no she does not brush her hair come on <laughs> this is never gonna work um but anyways yeah i was just amazed that it was doing so well and uh i still don't want to jinx it and i, I do want to talk about the the storyline itself but I, I i'm curious about the covers and i'm sure for people even if you haven't read the books you've probably seen the covers on facebook and, and online and there has been this slow steady reveal of of live from book one where you could barely see her to you know each, each book there's like more of her not in an exposing her kind of a way but exposing her face kind of a way was, yeah, was that absolutely. intentional? Yes and no. Um, once we picked the model that we were going to use, she does. She has this hood, and I really thought it would be fun to slowly reveal it because it's very metaphorical for Liv. Mm -hmm. I mean, she starts off very vulnerable, very closed off, doesn't like magic, doesn't like the magical world. Um, yeah, and we can we can get into that and 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 her journey. Um, and now, you know, we're in book nine and she is such a different person. So I think uh -huh. that the covers should reflect that evolution, right? So let, let's just talk about the, the story then. Just like the overall story, you know, of Liv and, and how the story launches, essentially. Because I, okay, there are yes. going to be some people who haven't read any of them, so we don't want to give anything away. And, you know, for people listening to this podcast, if – you know, you see the ninth book is coming out this week, and that means there are eight before that. You guys can read these books pretty quickly. So, um, oh yes. yeah, I mean, you You're could read the first eight books this week and then jump on the book nine this weekend, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely, and I love that. I, <laughs> it's so funny. It'll take me six weeks to write a book, and then we'll launch it, and then like two hours after it's launched, somebody will be like, oh, done. When do we get the next one? I'm like, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> love those readers, though. Yes. Well, um, you do have to love them, and it's like, wow, couldn't you have waited until tomorrow for that? Okay, I will get on it. <laughs> um, get more coffee. So the first book is The Rebellious Sister, and uh, it's it's book one in the Unstoppable Liv Font series. And we meet Liv at the very beginning, of course, and she's come from this big family that is full of royals in the House of Seven. And the House of Seven is essentially a governing body for magic. 
um, for magical creatures. We have everything from gnomes to giants to elves. And Liv abdicated her right um, to be in the House of Seven and to be a warrior. And the warriors fight the battles and police and uh, the council oversees them and, and assigns cases. But she didn't want to be a part of that after the death of her parents. Um, but other deaths happen in her family, causing her to have to step up. Uh, so she's like, fine, I'll I'll do this, you know. And it's like a twelve year sentence, and she's like, okay, I'll I'll do this. So she enters, re-enters this magical world, being very skeptical of it, which nobody is. Um, being a, a challenger to many of the um, head officials, mm-hmm. and also having an incredible sense of humor in the face of danger. So um, one of the things we really wanted to stress when we wrote this series was that laws are not the same thing as justice and the house of seven is enforcing laws but overlooking justice okay all right and you mentioned Liv has this great sense of humor yeah you sort of have a great sense of humor thank you well (laughs) some don't think so (laughs) and i I noticed some others some other similarities Liv is not the tallest person in the world she's pretty short sassy snarky and you're snack, uh, snark, snacky. You're snacky. I like it. No, we coined a new term. You're snacky. Yeah, let's have some snackies now. But you are also not the tallest person in the world. Um, I'm not. A little on the snarky side. It's true. Yeah. So this is like autobiographical almost, except for the except for the swords, probably, and the magic. Probably. Um, I'm not very good with the swords. I don't have any. Um, so how it came about was Michael and I were on a video com and we were thinking about our next project. And like I said, we'd done some stuff and I think it was a lot of him just being like, okay, Sarah, if that's what you want to do, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, he really brought the business aspect to it when we were doing this series. And then he had said, you know, I really want you to do something about a girl that lives in LA that's short and sassy and blonde. And I was like, Hmm. I really feel like that's hidden kind of close to home. Michael. Um, but you know, he has a really good instinct on this because yes, I he think does. He, he, it, it, it continues to amaze me because I, you know, like we've mentioned, I've had series that didn't take off. And when I look at it, I realize I wasn't connected to that main character. So what do the readers feel? Exactly the same thing. And when I write live, it just comes naturally, you know, and they connect and they really like her. So I think, I kind of have humanized myself in a way in this fictional character, but she's much braver than I am. She's much more, you know, daring. She's, she's a lot of things I'm not. So what is, what is the overarching goal for the series for live and in the series as, as she moves forward from book to book to book? Well, she's got to evolve. And like I said, you know, she's, she's gotten to be less reluctant. Um, she's gotten to be, I think one of the books is the reluctant warrior or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, and, you know, before she was kind of an island, you know, she worked at an electronic repair store and she didn't need magic and she didn't need friends. And now she has gotten by this point in the series, this huge group of friends that have this strong al- alliance with her. Mm-hmm. And she's willing to face any challenge in order to overcome. And, and like I said, it's about justice at the end of the day. All right. So this week's book is book nine. What's the title? It is The Passionate Delegate. And the titles, who comes up with the titles? Is that you and Michael together? Because they all, it, I can't imagine trying to actually say them like one after another for all <laughs> nine of them because they're all like three words and yeah, it's a mouthful. probably the same number of syllables. Yes, yes. And um, I, I get them all confused. If it's not the first book and the one I'm working on, uh-huh. I, don't, I don't know otherwise. So um, – Michael, again, has a really good instinct, I think, for naming strategies. And so originally I came up with a few different series titles, and he picked The Unstoppable Liv Buffon. And then I came up with different names, and I think I wanted the first book to be called, like, The House of Seven or something like that. And that's when he, he kind of came up with uh, The Rebellious Sister, and then we started playing off that for each of the books. So we mm-hmm. had, like, The Uncooperative Warrior and... Um, the passionate delegate and this book that I'm working on right now for book 10 is the unlikely heroes. Um, so I, I like it because it says a lot about our main character, but then it also says a lot about the people around her as we progress. 
Um, and I think it's intriguing. It's better than, than some of the other structures that I've gone with for naming in the past. Okay, so check it out. If you haven't read any of the unbelievable uh, Live Buffant books, unstoppable Live Buffant books yet, go back to book one. There is a box set for the first four books and work your way through, pick up book nine this week and book 10 is right around the corner. Corner. So Absolutely. Saranofsky, where what's the best place for people to follow you and your writing? Um, probably go to my website and it will lead you to everything else. So that's www.saranofsky.com. S A R A H N O F F K E dot com. Okay, and they can learn more about your writing. You've written a lot of books, not just for LMBPN. You also do a podcast, and you're just sort of a local celebrity in LA, which is not a bad place to be a local celebrity. I don't know about any of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for being here. Thank you.